Hello. Well, as you know, I'm, my name is Sterling Campbell. I own Sting Saddlery in Lewistown, Montana. And today I'm going to start a new thing. I'm going to be reading every day a chapter from this called, called, this book called Beyond, Boyhood and Beyond. And it's a really good book. It's by uh, Bob Schultz. And it's a really good book. And in this chapter, it's called One Degree at a Time. Do you know how to use a, a magnetic compass? I hope you do. It is important for a man to know his position and his direction as he travels this world. A simple compass with a little training and practice will help you travel confidently. It is useful in the woods or in a busy city. With it, you can provide direction to help others reach their destinations. Knowing which way you want to go can save hours of frustration. If you don't have a compass, get one. Learn how to use it. You will never regret it. Another great tool is a thermometer. Yes, simple thermometer tells you the temperature inside or outside your house. You can play games guessing the temperature, then check yourself with a thermometer. In time, you will confidently be able to sense the correct temperature. That could be important when you are driving a car. When your senses tell you it's freezing out here. You will be alert for icy roads. It just might save your life. These two simple tools help you to be more aware of what is happening around you. In the Pacific Northwest, if, it, if you feel a warm wind coming out of the south, it usually means rain. It's time to get your bike under cover. A cold wind out of the east means that it could freeze tonight, a wise response might be to put a tarp over the tomato plants. A compass and a thermometer both measure in units, called degrees. A compass has 360 degrees marks around its edge. A thermometer can have any number of degree marks on it, depending on its size. My yard thermometer records temperatures from minus 60 to 120 degrees. Both instruments are usually used to calculate change. They show the direction of the change and the amount of the change. All changes take place one degree at a time. You can never skip a degree in change. If you jump in the air, and spin completely around before landing, you have traveled 360 degrees. You passed every degree in your jump, though you were fast about it. When water warms from 32 degrees to 100 degrees, it must pass through every degree between 32 and 100. Change occurs one degree at a time. This is important because you are changing. You are changing from a boy to a man. You are changing in body size. Your mind is growing in wisdom and knowledge. Your heart is developing in character. Your spirit is expanding as God's spirit progressively fills you. All of this is happening one degree at a time. Sometimes you may not notice the change until quite a few degrees have passed. Great Aunt Betty exclaims, Billy, you have grown a foot since I saw you last. She might be right, but it was little by little, one degree of measurement at a time. Changing into a man is a continual process. It is learning one line after another, one precept after the next. Here a little, there a little, Many boys wait for the big jump of growth. It never comes. A man 
that is faithful in big things was faithful for years in little things. Diligence is careful. Steady effort. Today, tomorrow, and the next day. It is not necessarily speedy, but it always arrives at the destination. If you want to be good in math, don't worry about how big the book is. Simply do today's lesson well. If you want to memorize a chapter, don't be overwhelmed by its length. Just work on the one sentence for today. The rest will come, into, come in time. All good skills and qualities come little by little, one degree at a time. Beware, the opposite is also true. All bad qualities develop one degree after another. The slothful man becomes lazy, one soft choice after another. He may lie in bed only one minute after his alarm goes off, one minute, that is almost nothing. Tomorrow, it may be only one minute more. Slowly, those minutes add up. Two months from now, he may be lying in bed for an hour after his alarm rings. It is only a little sleep. It is only a little slumber. It is only a little folding of the hands to rest. One degree at a time, the once diligent man becomes a sloth. A number of years ago, I needed to change, but I was just too busy to do so. One degree at a time, my heart was growing cold. I could sense it. It did nothing. I did nothing. But God did. Our family lived on a tree farm in a travel trailer. The thin walls of the trailer allowed us to experience each season of the year. We felt the warmth of summer and the cold of winter. One particular winter was extremely cold. Exceptionally cold. Maintaining running water became a challenge. Throughout the night, we kept a trickle of water going in the bathroom sink. I woke up regularly, listening for the gurgling sound and then falling back asleep. The water in the well is about 55 degrees year-round. If it keeps running, the pipes cannot freeze. But when the water stops flowing... The temperature is well below freezing. All the lines freeze. If that happens, there is no more water to the trailer. Until the weather warms, and that could be weak. weeks. At 2.30 one morning, I awoke. The water had stopped. Without hesitation, I jumped out of bed, throwing on warm clothes, I went out into the night. First, I crawled under the trailer and squeezed all the hoses, checking for a hard spot that would indicate a frozen blockage. The hoses seemed okay. Then I ran 200 yards down the hill to the pump house, looking for trouble there. Unable to find any frozen pipes, I ran back up to the trailer for a heater. Down to the pump house, to plug it in up to the trailer for a lamp to put my hoses down to the pump to check for any blockages, any progress. I raced back and forth knowing that the longer it took to find the frozen block, the colder all the lines would become. On one trip up the road, I stopped by busyness and looked stopped my busyness and looked not the best reader guys I struggled in reading as a kid but I try very hard on 
one trip up the road, I stopped my busyness and looked up into the sky. The stars were brilliant. The night was so cold and calm that I could hear my heart beat. In the stillness, God spoke to my spirit. When your water lines begin to freeze, you jump out of bed immediately. Even in the middle of the night, it is important for you to have drinking water. When the living water in your heart begins to freeze, are you that quick to get up and attend to the trouble? I had been busy lately. The scares of the world were gradually freezing the water in my heart. There's a lot of scares going around in America today. Don't let don't let the living water in your heart freeze. The scares of the world were gradually freezing the water in my heart. Slowly, one degree at a time, I was growing cold toward God and wasn't doing anything about it. I knew the water was slow, slowing, but spiritually, I continued to lie in bed. On that freezing night, halfway between the trailer and the pump house, his presence melted my heart one degree at a time. He showed me again the purpose of life, reminded me of his love, and drew me to his warm side. It took two hours to find the fix, find and fix the water line, a short quarter inch pipe to the pressure gauge had frozen. A few minutes after setting up a light bulb to warm the pipe, we had water. Everyone rejoiced to have running water again, but it mattered little to me compared to having warm living water flowing in my heart once more. I get kind of emotional sometimes. Learning to be a man includes learning to calculate the direction and the temperature of your heart. Be willing to change that direction. The instant you sense you are one degree off course. When your heart temperature loses one degree of warmth toward God, make changes right away. A small good change today may prevent years of trouble in the future. Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Hebrew 4, Hebrews 4, 5. The compass that we're supposed to be using for ourselves is called the Bible. That's our compass. Compass. If we start feeling like God is no longer around, that's our thermometer. If you don't feel God's presence in your life, God never walks away from you. But you can walk away from him. And if you don't feel God's presence in your life, he hasn't left you. That means you walked away from him. And you need to change your compass and guide your way back to the straight and narrow. What is the temperature in your life? What have you been doing for God? With everything going on in America today, our world's upside down. We're working so hard to get President Donald Trump back in the presidency for four more years. And I stop and ask myself, how hard do I work to keep God in my life? Do I work as hard to keep God in my life as I do 
to keep President Donald Trump in the presidency? Do I talk about Jesus Christ to my fellow human beings as much as I talk about politics to everyone else? Has my compass got off? I pray to God it has not. But my, my trade is a saddle maker. My job, my job on earth is to preach the gospel. And if I'm not preaching the gospel, then my compass is off. I have gotten off a degree at a time. And the further I get off in my compass, the colder and colder my thermometer gets towards Christ. Reading your Bible every day keeps your focus on. It at least keeps you thinking about it. More than reading, you can look at a compass and walk in the wrong direction. You can read your Bible and walk in the wrong direction. You have to follow it. You have to follow it like your life depends on it. Let us try harder to follow our compass and to pay attention to our thermometer, whether we're getting cold towards Christ or warm. We should be hot. I read today in the Bible about, about the apostles getting beaten for preaching the gospel and how happy they were that they were considered honorable enough to get beaten for Christ's sake. And I looked deep into my own life and said, if that happened to me, what would I do? Would I be joyful about somebody beating me for preaching the gospel? Or would I be mad and ready to kill him? And sad to say, my heart told me, my conscience told me, Sterling, you'd be mad. My degrees were off. I wasn't following my compass like I should. Because dying a martyr's death should be the happiest thing in the world. Being punished for being a Christian should make us happy. Make sure your compass is on. Make sure your thermometer reads warm. Actually, scratch that. Make sure your thermometer reads hot. Because God said he hates lukewarm he doesn't like lukewarm Christians. He said he will spew them out of his mouth. He would rather you be cold or hot, but not lukewarm. And sad to say, most of America is lukewarm. You don't know where you stand until you're tested. Well... I said I would try to keep this under 20 minutes to myself. I didn't say it on the video, but it's 19 minutes, so I will end. But it was a good chapter. There's a lot to learn in this book. And I hope you, I hope all of you look deep into your own lives to see where your compass is. I know mine has gotten off and I'm getting it back on one degree at a time by spending more time in God's word and less time in politics and more time preaching the gospel, I want to keep my thermometer hot, my compass on. Take care. God bless. Have a good day.